Today we're checking out the RX-5 Ultra from Hoyt. Welcome back to Mike's Archer's YouTube and today we are taking a look at some of the new bows from Hoyt for their 2021 lineup and we have got the new RX-5 Ultra which is their longer axle to axle uh, new RX-5. And some of the great things Hoyt has changed on this bow we'll get into. They made a lot of changes for this year. Uh, a lot of them are for the good. There's a couple things that uh, we're not thrilled about. But uh, let's start with the general specs on this bow. The speed rating on the Ultra is coming in at 334 feet per second. And the axle to axle being it's a little longer than the standard RX-5 at 34 inches axle to axle. Now if you're the guy that likes... A little longer axle to axle bow just for the stability and forgiveness of it or if you've got a really long draw so you need that longer platform then you need to take a look at the rx5 ultra because it's going to get you where you need to be for those longer draw lengths and just a more forgiving platform as well now the next thing we want to look at from the rx5 is the factory spec weight on this bow hoyt is coming in and saying this bow is at 4.6 pounds now as a carbon riser bow uh, it is on the heavy side. We threw it on the scale and we got 5.2 pounds out of the box with everything on it as it comes. And frankly, if you're wanting a carbon riser bow and you're wanting it for those lightweight uh, to shave a few ounces or even pounds for a mountain hunt or an elk hunt or something, then this is probably not the bow for you. It is probably one of the heaviest bows we have tested all year. Uh, the RX-5 came in at five pounds it was quite heavy but the ultra being a little longer comes in even heavier even though it is a carbon riser bow at 5.2 now we did strip it down and try to get it back to that factory spec weight and we did once you take the limb dampeners out of the limbs take off the short stop uh, stabilizer that they've added for this year and the other dampeners on the riser we were able to get it back down to that 4.6 pound spec that Hoyt is saying this bow is at but it's still heavy in fact, it's probably heavier than any target bow we've tried and certainly on the heavier end of any hunting bow that we have shot for this year. So frankly, that is something we're not impressed by from Hoyt. If you're going to make a carbon riser bow, we just feel it should be lighter and they did not do that. Now, on the flip side of that, if you take this bow and you're going to weight it back up with stabilizers or you're going to want sidebars and all the extra stuff on here and you want this bow to shoot and be heavier, and then this is going to be okay. You're not going to need to add as much weight to get it back up to where you want it to be to sit in your hand, maybe balance out better. Uh, it's just a bigger platform bow and it's going to be a heavier bow. But if that's not a concern of yours for a carbon riser bow, if you like the cool look of it uh, from the Hoyt Tech riser side of things and the carbon riser side of things, then by all means, certainly look at this bow because it still has that very cool look. Uh, it's got a great feel this year and is a great shooting bow. It's just on the extremely heavy side out of the box as a bow. Now the other thing that Hoyt did, they did a complete cam redesign for this year. and They went with this new HBX binary cam system and went away from that cam and a half system that they've had for the last several years. Now what that did allow uh, in this redesign is they also did away with that multiple base cam option that they've had. As if you're familiar with Hoyt, as you know, you would order this bow as a base cam 2 or a base cam 3, depending on your draw length, and then you would have modules with inside that base cam that would allow you to adjust that draw length. Uh, and even if you had a really short draw length, you might even have to go to a base cam 1 model uh, to get those extremely short draw lengths. They eliminated all those base cams, went to a single base cam option, and then went into the modules and gave you two module options to get the draw length adjustment out of this cam. Now the number two adjustment mod is going to go from 27 out to 30 inches and has been you know, optimized for performance at those lower draw length settings, picking back up those speeds that you may have lost in a single module adjustment. But you're going to be able to go from 27 to 30 on a number two. Now on this Ultra, you're going to get those extra long draw lengths and on a number three base cam module, you're going to be able to take that out to a 30 and a half all the way out to a 32. It gives you those longer draw lengths if you're that guy who needs that 31, 32 inch draw, then this is going to be the bow you're going to need to look at. So what that did with changing out those module systems is made it a little simpler system. It did away with the draw stop option. 
so you don't have to move your draw stop peg separate from uh, your module adjustment. You're going to be able to just slide that rotating mod on here to get those adjustments. And then if you actually need a shorter draw length that this doesn't fit, you're going to be able to go back to your dealer, uh, have them grab that number two mod for a shorter draw length, and swap those out for you and be able to get down to a lower draw length if necessary. It just simplified the overall cam system and made it a little sleeker, better design. From there, they went to a brace height of seven inches on this bow. So it's a higher brace height bow to go along with that longer axle to axle, which just makes it a more forgiving platform and a very nice bow to shoot. Now you're gonna have an 80 or 85% let off option, and it's gonna have that adjustable peg here on the end of the rotating mod uh, that's gonna be able to slide out to change that valley and give you a little more let off or a little less let off depending on which way you want it to go. Now this bow comes available in everything from 40 to 80 pounds in every 10 pound increment as well as the 65 pound option as well. So you've got a ton of variation there if you need to get some really light weights for maybe some younger shooters or, or ladies, you're gonna be able to get some really light weights in this bow all the way out to that 80 pound option which seems to be becoming more popular these days uh, with these easier draw curves, you're able to pull a little more weight than you have in the past. Or if you're wanting to shoot extreme heavy weights or FOCs, you're going to be able to beef this bow up and get that 80 pound option in it as well. Now, some of the other things that Hoyt changed for this year, they did a ton of integrated options and systems in this bow. Now, they had the integrated rest system from last year, and they kept that on the new bows for 2021. You can still get that Hoyt integrated QAD rest to slide on the dovetail on the back of the riser. Now that's just gonna allow you a direct mount with no bolts that's gonna keep that rest from being able to adjust up and down or slide on you. It's also gonna center the weight up of the rest to the center of the riser of the bow, giving it better balance and feel uh, by moving everything into the middle. Now from the integrated rest, they also gave you the new Picatinny rail mount system, and that's gonna come with every carbon riser bow. It's gonna come in the box. All you're gonna need to do is remove uh, your inside sticker and, and your outside bolt holes, clamp that new Picatinny rail system on the front, and it's gonna allow you a few of those true ball sight options to mount directly in line in the front of that bow on a Picatinny rail mount. Now what that did, again, brings the weight of that sight to the center of the bow, giving it better balance, better feel, better vibration control, uh, and mounting it there in the front of the bow. It's also going to be allow you to bring everything in a little tighter. If you were having issues of your arrows hitting a rest or, or a sight mount there, mounting it up, you're going to be able to bring everything in a little tighter on your bow, uh, mounting it directly to the outside of the sight mount window there, rather than having to mount it on top of your direct mount of a sight plate. One of the other integrated systems that they brought to this year was an integrated SL sidebar mount. So you're going to be able to take this bow and put a sidebar that's going to be down here towards the bottom of the riser, putting the weight down lower where you need it and mounting directly into this riser rather than coming off your upper stabilizer hole and then needing a down angle uh, to get that weight just balanced the way you want it they've come up with a direct mount system on this riser. The other thing you'll notice that Hoyt came with this year that stood out in a lot of the pictures when people were first seeing this bow is the new stabilizer system. And it's a two and a quarter inch inline short stop stabilizer system. And it gets the weight down here towards the limb pocket where it needs to be taking more vibration and kick out of this bow making it more dead in the hand and also getting better balance with it. They did not change the stabilizer system as far as having your original standard mount up top or if you want it directly behind, you've got a back mount as well. So you've still got some other options if you want to run a standard stabilizer up higher or a Tacticam or something like that. You're going to be able to mount those directly into the riser of the bow on the standard stabilizer hole or if you want some back weights, you can certainly put those here uh, in line with the string stop. One of the other things we noticed that Hoyt changed for this year was their roller guard system. Now in the past, the roller guard system they have had has been two separate wheels sitting above each other. This year they changed that, brought it directly in line again, and stacked those wheels on top of each other with a smaller wheel out front and a larger wheel in the back to separate those cables. Uh, it's still got a great feel with those bearings in there, no chatter or anything like that, but it certainly gave it a better tunability and brought those cables in line, giving a little better clearance also where it's not top and bottom. But overall, just changing where that sits and how it sits 
uh, just gave it a great feel and a, and a better look on this bow as well. They do include the limb dampeners in this bow and they also here in the shelf of the riser, Hoyt has always included that rubber coating on the inside of the shelf. That's something that I like uh, from a hunting standpoint because you don't have to go back and felt the inside of this riser to keep noise to a minimum with a fall away rest or accidentally clanging your arrow here. Now Hoyt has always had a ton of color options and this year is no different. They still have 11 total color options available in this bow. You're going to get three solid colors with a couple of new colors that they came out with in the wilderness green and then the new buckskin which they had buckskin a few years ago this is a little different shade uh, to this year's buckskin but it looks really good on some of these bows as always black is still there there are four camo options with your real tree option that's always been there and your gore optifade colors and then they've got your four special makeups available in this bow as well you've got your two cameron haynes keep hammering options with black and camo, and then you've got your two bone collector options with also available in black or camo there in those. So just a ton of color options if you want to decorate this bow in any way that you see fit and just customize it to your liking. Now the price point on this bow is coming in at $1,750 for MSRP, which is towards the top end of any of the carbon riser bows or any of the bows out there. It's where Hoyt has been for the last several years holding that top end spot for price. So if you're price sensitive, you may not want to look at a Hoyt, but as always, there's a ton of cool features and shootability in this bow uh, that certainly make it well worth the money. You're probably going to see it priced about a hundred bucks less than that at MAP with $1,650. The Ultra is a little more expensive than the standard X5, but certainly well worth every penny. The shootability of this bow this year is way better than what we have seen in the past. Now we're going to step outside and we're going to shoot this bow over the chronograph and let you know how it performs as far as speed and noise and just overall feel of this bow. And as always, we will be shooting with a 400 grain arrow on 70 pounds at 29 inches on 85% let off. So that'll let you know where those specs are coming from when you see them. We have stepped outside with the new 2021 RX-5 Ultra from Hoyt. Being a little longer axle to axle bow, uh, should give a little better feel in the hand and uh, also be a little slower than the other RX-5. But uh, as always, we're gonna be shooting this bow with a 400 grain arrow at 29 inch draw length. And we've got it on the 85% let off and shooting it on 70 pounds. So we're gonna shoot this thing through the chronograph and see what kind of numbers it puts up as well as noise and feel here. All right, so we're getting 299. We've been hovering right there at 298, 299, getting those numbers out of this bow. And for a little longer axle to axle platform, uh, those are some pretty nice numbers. Hoyt's been uh, posting some great speeds this year. And as far as the uh, draw cycle on this bow, it feels really good. And uh, from past years, it has not been our favorite draw cycle, but Hoyt has definitely stepped up the game for this year. And just the feel as this bow rolls over to that 85% let off is one of the smoother bows on the market for this year. So something you need to take a look at. But as far as the noise and the decibel rating on that bow, uh, that bow's coming in. Uh, right at 99, 98.8. Uh, we had a couple shots there earlier that were 99. So right there where most of the Hoyts and most every other bow has been falling as far as a noise rating. So not an exceptionally quiet bow, but definitely not an exceptionally loud bow either. Uh, it's just right there with everybody else. And then the aftershock on this bow, uh, if you've shot Hoyts over the last few years or went to your shop and tried them, these bows are much more dead in the hand than they have been in the past. Uh, and the, uh, the Ultra is certainly uh, not disappointing there as well. Whatever Hoyt has done this year has been a dramatic step in the right direction. Uh, and we love the feel of these new carbons uh, for the draw cycle as well as the aftershot. Uh, just compared it to what it's been in the past, uh, they have definitely made some quality changes in this bow. So if you're looking for a new Hoyt, give us a call here at Mike's Archery and we will get you set up.